In this chapter, we're going to start a very interesting journey into typography world and how to create typography and even how to control it within Adobe Illustrator. And I consider Adobe Illustrator one of the best when it comes to creating typography. So in this video, we're going to learn how to use the type tool and also how to master the character panel and how to create line type or lines with typography. So I'm going to be showing my panels by pressing tab and we're going to start by dragging the type tool from here or pressing T for shortcut then in order to start typing within Adobe Illustrator all you have to do is to click anywhere and you're gonna see that lorem epsom text which is dummy text inserted by Adobe Illustrator to tell you what's your font type and size and by default it will be highlighted and it will be using the last font I've been using within the program which is Media Pro as you can see in here and also it will be using the last font size I've been using so you can start typing anything instead of that dummy text by pressing delete on keyboard then let's type typography for instance and when you finish typing your line you can be pressing escape or even you can be pressing command to switch to selection tool and clicking anywhere so now we can be switching to selection tool pressing V on keyboard and I'm gonna be selecting that line that we've just created in here and you can move it around like that easily and of course you can be resizing your font pressing shift on keyboard and drag your mouse from any corner of these corners to enlarge your text proportionally or even you can be changing your font size as well from here by clicking that little arrow and you can be selecting any of these font sizes or even you can be typing the font size you would like maybe 92 for instance and you can be changing your font family from here by clicking that little arrow and you will be seeing all the fonts installed on your computer to select from starting by your very recent fonts at the top followed by the other fonts so if you start hovering over any of these fonts you will be seeing it in action demonstrated on your text so we can be selecting for example Arno Pro and we can be changing our font style from here by clicking that little arrow and you will be seeing all these different styles for that Arno Pro font and of course not all fonts including all these styles but when it comes to Arno Pro for instance it's including all these styles that you can be choosing from so you can be selecting semi bold which will be between regular and bold so these are the basics of using the type tool now let's even discover more controls for our type and in order to do so we're gonna be opening our character panel and you can be opening that one from here by clicking on character and you will see your character panel in here or even you can open it from window then going to type then selecting character panel from here or even in your properties panel you're gonna be seeing your character options in here as well and you can be accessing even more options by clicking that button in here and you're gonna be seeing the exact panel just like in here of course if you've got your panel opened like that you can be showing more options by clicking on that hamburger menu in here and you can be showing options so you can be choosing your font family from here or even you can be clicking and start searching for any font if you would like maybe myriad pro and you can be selecting your font or either one of its styles from here so I'm gonna be selecting Maria Pro semi bold italic and here in that typography anatomy you can see the difference between the italic and regular text so it's gonna be leaning a little bit on the right side as you can see so you can see the difference between those two P letters in the same word and by the way this typography anatomy could be very helpful for you guys learning about that terminology could be very helpful for you to sound professional or even if you're interested in typography or graphic design that definitely will be a plus for you anyway it could look quite complicated however it's not really that complicated especially if you get to know the basics so here if we take a look at that typography word typography is typed in a font and anatomy is typed in a totally different font because fonts mainly classified into two categories serif fonts and sans serif fonts and serif fonts means that it has all these little extra ornaments in here like that and these fonts are mainly used for classic ancient or even heritage art directions 
because they are classic fonts and they look quite old however when it comes to sans serif fonts they don't include all these serifs within the letters they are quite minimal and they are modern fonts and they can be used for most of the recent design purposes like modern or even scientific reasons and they are the most common fonts used these days and the spaces between each two letters will be called kerning like the distance in here or the distance in here or between each two letters and of course you know the caps letters or uppercase letters like that one in here and all these letters are lowercase letters or small caps and we usually type our small letters between those two dotted lines however some letters will be exceeding those base lines like the B letter in here we have the sender part which is that part of our letter and also for the H letter when it comes to that ascending part in here and the distance between the very descending part and the very ascending part of our type will be resembling our text size and the spacing between two lines will be called leading and it will be measured from the baseline of that word all the way to the baseline of typography word so those are our main guidelines that you might need to know to have a proper control over your typography and you will be finding that file in your resources you can be checking all these little extra details of your font for more knowledge however now we're going to be going back to our character panel so we can be selecting our font size from here or even we can be pressing shift and clicking in here to drop 10 points of our font or we can be using the shortcut command or control shift follow stop to increase our font or comma to reduce our font size like that or we can be pressing continuously like that to increase our font or reduce its size easily like that and here we can be changing the leading between two lines so if we edit that word in here by selecting the type tool and clicking in here we're gonna be having our cursor flashing like that we're gonna be pressing enter to create a new line and I'm gonna type anatomy as well and now we have our font size on 68 for these two words in here however for the reading we have it on 81 points and we can be reducing that one a little bit or even we can leave it on auto as it is however we can be reducing that one all the way to 68 and that will be our minimum reduction for that font so if we go to 72 for instance it's not making much difference however if we select 68 it will be quite tight like that now let's go even below that all the way to 60 and you will see that our fonts are getting overlapping especially at the A and P letters and also it might not be so readable especially for smaller fonts so when it comes to the spacing between your lines or your leading make sure it doesn't go below your font size number or even use slightly higher numbers to be in safe side and here we have the kerning between two characters so let me delete that one in here we don't need it anymore and let's say we need to increase the spacing only between those two characters in here so I'm gonna be selecting the type tool and I'm gonna be clicking in here and now we have the kerning is set on minus three we can be changing their values from here by clicking that one or even we can be pressing alt or option and using the right and left arrows to adjust the kerning between those two letters like that so now we have a huge gap between these two letters in here and i got that orange layer at the background for reference so let me hide that one to make it even more visible to you guys and let me get it back on and now let's reduce the spacing between them as you were like that and if you would like to increase the spacing between each and every character you can be using that option in here which is called tracking however you need to be selecting your word first then select maybe minus values like these values in here or even positive values like these ones in here 
let me select the entire world in here and set that one back to zero and here we have the vertical and horizontal scaling which is giving you the option to distort your line or your word or even your letter so you might be careful using that one unless you're going to be using that one for a specific design purpose so if we select that M for instance and we increase our horizontal scale all the way to 200 like that and let me hide that orange guide in here you will be getting a result like this one which you might be using for some design reason anyway I'm gonna be undoing that and here we have the baseline shift for our characters so we can be selecting that B for instance and we can be increasing that one from here or either using alt or option shift and up and down arrows to increase our baseline or shift it like that ascending or descending according to your design so if we deselect that one by clicking in here you can see the difference clearly between these two characters however I'm gonna set it back to its original values by selecting zero point and you can be rotating your letters from here maybe 45 degrees like that or 60 and so on and we can be converting any word to caps letter either all caps from that button or small caps from that one so I'm gonna be double clicking that anatomy word to select the entire word like that and I'm gonna be pressing all caps converting all letters to uppercase letters and we can be selecting the small caps to have them like that all of them will be uppercase letters however only that A letter will be bigger in size so I'm gonna be selecting the entire word again you can see the difference if we select all caps all of them are exceeding the X height which is that distance in here so I'm gonna be selecting that one and deselecting that option and we can be converting any letters or numbers into superscript or subscript by using these two lines in here so I'm gonna be selecting the Y and it will be converting our Y into superscript like that usually that one would be better for numbers and subscript will be getting our letter like that so if we type one do like that and we select that one and convert it like that and this one to be like that you can be typing these numbers easily using these two options in here so we can be selecting our word again and using the underline to have the underline or link effect on our word or even we can be selecting the entire word again and selecting that strike through and it will be looking like that of course you don't use both of them simultaneously so I'm gonna be disabling that one so let me undo that and of course you can be changing your language from here which could be important for using some special letters like that one in here or some digits might be looking different from language to another so you might need to choose another language to access them and of course some of these options can be accessed from that menu in here like the caps options and you can be resetting your panel options from here so for instance we have our panel options are set on that font size and that leading size can be resetting all these values anytime from that option in here especially if you change it, these values for the scaling and the kerning you might need to reset your panel instead of setting all these values to zero again so that's it for the line type lesson and in our next lesson we're going to be learning how to create paragraphs and even how to control them so stay tuned and i'll be seeing you there